Hey, I'm Joe with J-Road Studios. In this video, I'm gonna show you my process for building beds, whether it's for people or for pets. This one's built for a big black lab for a client of mine, um, but it's the same process I use on all my people beds as well. So stay tuned and check it out. So this build starts just like all the others, roughing everything out. I went through and figured out where I wanted to get my parts from, from these boards marked them out with some chalk, and then just using my jigsaw, roughing them out, leaving everything plenty oversized. Now this bed is gonna be made from four quarter, otherwise known as one inch thick black walnut. It has been plain, so it's more like three quarters of an inch. Now I'm roughing everything out, I'm edge jointing, ripping my straight edges. Um, but I didn't go ahead and get these boards totally flat. They were a little wonky, like so they've got some imperfections, um, but we're gonna take care of that. The best way I've found, if you're really trying to save material, or you're limited and you just don't want to spend any more money on wood or anything like that is use some sort of alignment tool like my fe fancy fest tool you can use biscuit joiners dowels um, they all work you just need something to kind of bring the boards level in those high and low spots i've done this before like especially on my walnut hutch build if you've seen that um, that was some pretty wonky rough sawn walnut that i bought from a local sawyer out in the country and as nice as it was and turned out to be it didn't start out that way so Using some alignment tools, I was able to yield flat panels. Um, and like I said, you don't have to do anything fancy. The Fest tool just saves me so much time. So I'm just getting all that kind of stuff taken care of and out of the way. All right, so here's the idea. This front panel is gonna have these little curve recesses that's gonna expose the front of the mattress most of the way across. It's gonna give it a little easier for the dog to climb in and out. And I think it's just gonna look nice. Um, so there's no reason for me to use all of this walnut to go ahead and make the panel because it's, it's not all super flat. I'm just going to create a chance of me cutting into a domino because I would need one here and here and like, and I want to have it come down basically to this bottom board, giving it about a four inch reveal at the bottom. So half the mattress will be exposed. So I kind of figured out left is a little oversized. Drew it out with the chalk so you guys can see. This will be about the total height and it's going to have these curves. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically just chop off two sections of good meat here, and then use some dominoes to get those aligned, clamp them up, and then we're gonna make a template later on so that the curve is symmetrical. Should be pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna hop over to the table saw and knock this out. All right, so if you're not building a bed for your canine companion or potentially even a day bed, you're probably not gonna need to, need to go through these extra steps to get this panel. Uh, all taken care of. You can probably get everything out of one board or potentially two, but again, you won't have to do all this little extra work I'm doing here. Uh, the big takeaway of this stage is making sure that all your panels you're getting together are going to be the right width and right length to go ahead and accommodate your mattress. Because obviously, if your mattress doesn't fit inside the box, it's not going to work. Um, and if it's the wrong height based on your design, it might look a little funny or it might not work depending on the design you're going with. Um, but right now, I'm just using the miter gauge on the table saw to square up one end and then using a stop block to cut all my parts out for this front panel. Like I said, I'm working around imperfections in the wood trying to find, you know, pretty appealing pieces that also match pretty well with the grain. Um, so after I got all that cut out, here I am laying everything out, kind of showing you what I did there. And then off camera, I went ahead and just cut a couple dominoes. And then straight into the glue up. I had a lot of panels to get together. No reason to fiddle fart around. So using some uh, forbidden chocolate milk, otherwise known as Type Bond 2 Dark, squeezing everything in there. And then going ahead, plopping the dominoes in and just throwing a couple clamps on. I'm not going crazy. I said a couple F clamps to get the seams aligned and then just looking for that general squeeze out. So once I had that panel out of the way, I went ahead and did the headboard and then both side rails. Like I said, all you need is a little pressure. If you don't have these parallel clamps, there's plenty of great alternatives out there. Um, everything from Harbor Freight to pipe clamps. Like I said, I just wait and buy all of these when they go on sale by a couple every year. And to show you how many panels I did, here I am stacking all my panels up out the way. And I'm gonna let these sit and dry overnight. While all that's drying, let's go ahead and work on the leg blanks. Unfortunately, the footage that I did take um, wasn't usable. The camera didn't focus right, so all of the lights in my shop looked like they were strobing. Uh, made it very difficult to watch, so I definitely wasn't gonna be able to use any of that footage. Um, but all I did was rip down some four-quarter black walnut, 
smear some chocolate milk in there, and then laminate them together, giving me nice, thick leg blanks to work with. Once I did that, pulled all the panels out of clamps, and then did my initial sanding, just up to 120 grit, getting all the glue squeeze out off, and getting any high spots, getting them all relatively nice and flat. From there, it was time to go ahead and start cutting our stuff to its final height. In this case, the front, like the footboard, I guess, or headboard, depending on how you want to look at it, and both side rails are all going to be the same height. So I made it a point to cut all of them at the same time. This way, even though if they were supposed to be 12 and three quarters, if they came out to 12 and five eighths or, you know, 13 inches, as long as they were all cut at the same time, they will be the same, which is more important um, than going ahead and being dead accurate to your plans. You know, repeatability is definitely more important in this game. And then just going ahead and cutting the headboard down. Again, I'm cutting off all these imperfections. I kind of planned all that ahead. And then from here to go ahead and cross cut all my parts, I went ahead and switched to my 90 tooth blade. Now a higher tooth blade is definitely going to give you a much cleaner end grain cut like this when you're cross cutting, but obviously it's terrible for rip cutting. Um, if you don't have a blade like this, it's definitely worth the investment. These are one of those CMT orange ones. I think this blade was only like 50, 60 bucks at the time and it can be resharpened. So in my opinion, it is a steel. Um, but again, you just want some sort of good blade or at least a general purpose combo blade, maybe a 40, 50 tooth. Um, but obviously these panels are way too long for me to cross cut on my table saw. So busting out the track saw, squaring everything up to itself and just lopping off those ends. Now at this point, I'm still leaving everything a touch oversized because once I get the headboard and the footboard cut down, I wanna make sure they're the exact same. So I'm gonna measure them pretty much off of themselves um, but the biggest thing is I'm checking for square after all these cuts, even though I'm lining everything up beforehand, you know, making sure everything's square and all my gaps come together is more important than, you know, having this exact perfect measurement. Like I said, it's really more important to be accurate in that aspect versus going off specific plans as things change. I mean, and it's handmade, so there's tons of imperfections and little things like that. All right, so squaring up a regular panel is easy enough. Square one end, measure off of it square your other end up to get your final length. Since this is a U shape and we want to keep the opening symmetrical and centered, we need to do a little more layout, a little more precise than just lopping the ends off. So I went ahead and already found my center mark. I've squared both ends off camera. Uh, right now it's 54 inches. We need it to be 53 and a half. So we've got to cut a quarter inch off each end. So from our center line, we know we need to measure 26 and three quarters. That is going to give us a 53 and a half inch panel with our opening centered on that. So just using a rule, mark out 26 and three quarters, take my square, line it up, and mark that out. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. So, again, I'm just trying to square everything up with my line. Make sure the rule is squared up. Make my mark. And then come back with a square. Just make it nice and easy myself. I know exactly where to lay my track. And then take tape measure, double check. We're sitting 26 and three quarter, 26 and three quarter. So we're good. Now go ahead and cut these ends off. And then when we're done, want to lay this and our backboard or our headboard in this scenario together. We want to make sure that they're the same length. I'm leaving these a little oversized right now. So in case I want to shrink it down, uh, to tighten up the gap around the mattress. We'll do that, um, but the most important thing is that they're the same size for your sides and your fronts. So that way your opening is nice and square and a little bit stronger bed, and then it's just gonna look better. If you have you know, a trapezoidal shaped bed, it's a little weird. So let's go ahead and cut these off. While I try to maintain a good balance of information sharing and also entertainment value, um, if there's something that I'm not super clear on or you don't fully understand and you maybe have some questions, Leave me a comment down below. I make it a point to respond to every single comment that I get. 
I love your guys' feedback. And if I can help clear up something that you're unsure of, especially if you're getting ready to take that next step and build a project that I've done or, you know, using some of the tips you learn in these videos to, you know, improve your skill or make something else new, I would love to be able to help. So again, leave me a comment down below. You can also message me over on Instagram at JRUD Studios, but definitely leave a comment here first. I'm more responsive on here. Uh, anyways, I'm going ahead and I'm cleaning up all my leg blanks. So I jointed them, like I said, you saw earlier, and then I cleaned up the glue squeeze out, and now I'm gonna be squaring up one end, and then going ahead and cutting them all down to their final length. Obviously, four corners means four legs. The two legs in the front will be shorter, and then the two back two will be taller. That's usually how that works when you have a varying height set up like this. Uh, but then I'm gonna be using a one, two, three block to use the domino and connect it in there. Um, there was a little bit of time crunch on this one. I did want to get into more joinery, um, but unfortunately I just didn't have the time to do it. I had thought about doing, you know, a dado or a rabbit with the router table or the table saw, um, and having these headboard and footboards sit inside of something like that, like a, like a dado. Um, but again, I just was on a time hack with this one. So domino it is. All right. So now that we know everything's lines up, everything looks good. Uh, we can go ahead and cut our leg blanks to their final width. So I'm just going to square these up. So I've already gone and measured the height. Now I'm going to cut them to the same width here, square them up. It's still going to be plenty strong. Uh, and then I think it'll just look a little bit better. They're a little chunky. The backboard looks good the way I'm insetting the legs and everything, but I think it'll look better as a whole squaring them up. So let's go ahead and do that now. And by that, I mean, forget to press record as soon as you go into the cut and set the tripod up because you're not paying attention. Um, so you're gonna have to take my word that I did it and it came out awesome. I also cut down these two by four spacer blocks to hold the panels in the right height. This makes it so much easier when working by yourself, making sure that everything is in the exact same location. Um, and then just threw a little couple clamps on there to hold it in place. Now, I like to build my beds with knockdown hardware whenever possible. Both beds in my home are set up this way, this exact same hardware. I absolutely love it. It's eighth inch thick steel. It's all powder coated. Um, it's pretty foolproof. Not totally foolproof, but pretty close. So I use a setup block to get everything lined up to the same height. And then I use a VIX bit or a self-centering drill bit to start my pilot holes. And then just send everything home with the provided screws. It's super simple. I mean, really can't get much easier than that. And I love not having to have Allen keys or specialty wrenches to take your bed apart, which is just a huge pain in the butt. Now, to hold the slats up and everything, we're going to be using some poplar. Um, and then we're also going to be using our center rail. So for the center rail supports, we're going to be laminating these two chunks of four-quarter poplar that I had sitting around. Um, this is exactly how I did the leg blanks since that footage was lost. Smeared the glue and then a face grain to face grain joint, which is one of the strongest. After that, some more chocolate milk, some more dominoes, and a little bit of clamping just to get the head and footboard all finished up there. Now, obviously, I'm not showing you in all these videos, uh, but there's tons of sanding and little imperfections and touch-up that is done between all of this. Um, especially the more sanding you can do while the parts are disassembled as far as your panels, it makes it a whole lot easier getting all your corners and everything like that. So try and think ahead whenever you're doing this kind of stuff. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. And then I'd film so much random stuff throughout the day that my camera actually died during this footage, shooting of this. Uh, I think I was at like 5% when I started and I tried to go through it. So this is actually real time, believe it or not. You know, uh, but just made it work. And you can see how I use two clamps to make that full distance. Because even though I have some big clamps, I don't have clamps that are almost 60 inches long. So the next day... Just pulling it all out, making sure everything was all nice and good, which thankfully all my gaps closed up uh, and everything was sitting pretty. And then we decided to go ahead and nix the whole curved opening idea. The client actually liked this look a little bit better. This is more along the, the example photos that he had sent in. So moving on past that. Um, and then we're adding these top rails. Again, I'm just using a couple little four millimeter dominoes just to hold it in place. The joint will be plenty strong with glue. I just want some alignment aids to make my life as easy as possible. Definitely don't want to be making mistakes when you're this far into a project. It's just super frustrating and setbacks are not what I'm about. 
So just did a quick dry assembly and then straight into the real thing. No reason to uh, stew too long on this one as it's one of the more simpler parts of this project. Now, if you're still watching this far in the video, I just wanna go ahead and say thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, if you're watching it out of spite, again, still helping me out. So thank you as well, I guess. Um, but if you're not subscribed, we should definitely go ahead and fix that. Um, you at least like my videos enough or if there's some reason you're hanging around. Um, either way, definitely don't wanna miss more of my stuff. I've got some pretty cool stuff coming out here in the future. So yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Now what I'm doing here is going ahead and breaking down the poplar that will become the mattress support slats. So just going ahead and squaring everything up and then ripping them all down to width. In this case, I think it was two and three quarter inch wide strips. Um, it's pretty typical for a bed. You can kind of do what you want here. You can use a whole solid piece of plywood or things like that, but it's best for a mattress to be able to breathe underneath. Um, especially one for a pet, like where like you get all the germs and dirt and everything. It's just best for it to be able to have airflow all the way throughout. It's going to help prevent mold and mildew on the underside of that mattress. Um, so I'm cutting down all my slats. And then these are actually going to be the little support rails that the slats sit on or like the cleats. So here's kind of how it works. I went ahead and roughly clamped everything in place and then lined up all my, spl my slats, made sure that I figured I needed the correct amount, which I actually cut one too many, but it kind of worked out because one had an ugly gash in it and, um, so just lining it all up roughly eyeballing the spacing and then now we're going to go ahead and work on that middle support um, since this bed is spanning that full I think 55 inch width just so that mattress doesn't sag in the middle or the dog doesn't snap it jumping on there so just ripping everything to its final width uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut everything to obviously to final length now I'll kind of show you a little bit more of what I mean, what we're gonna do for these center support brackets. So we laminated this, these thick blocks together, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut some half laps in them. I basically do half lap joinery, put that to sit in there nice and easy. So just using a square, lining everything up to the end of that piece, and then marking it out. I'm not going for a tight fit. I'm actually gonna leave the slats a little short and then I'm gonna cut the dados a little bit wide um, for seasonal wood movement. And cause it really doesn't need to be super snug in there. Like I said, the main part is that it's not gonna come off um, and that's gonna help support that weight across that span. Um, that's really all that matters here. Now I decided to do half the width, or half the thickness, excuse me, of my stretcher piece. Um, and then obviously I, I didn't change the height of the blade to cut the dado into the block itself. So just using the setup block, lining everything up with the tooth. You can also use your combo square, or you can line it up with the marks on your piece itself. Just take a couple of test cuts. Don't just go full bore, or do go full bore. Live your life, you know, do do you. Um, and then I guess my, my tripod was touching the table saw. As you can see, all that sweet vibration. The footage continues that way, and the song goes on. So we're gonna skip that. Uh, now. Here you see me blindly going ahead and putting that block in place. Now I just cut two scrap pieces into spacer blocks. They were just off cuts from the slats themselves. I'm making sure that everything lines up nice and square. And you see how that sits in there. And then using the other part from that laminated block we made, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the height for that because we're gonna use that to support the middle even farther. So I went ahead and cut that off camera, lined everything up right in the center and then drilled out a couple holes to obviously put some screws in. Um, and I'm all gonna go ahead and countersink them as well. Now I said this, you can do this many different ways. In this scenario, since I'm doing this on a shorter span, it's not a super full-size bed, I'm only doing one. On my king bed I have at the house, I actually did two and I just use full two by fours, but again, the size and scale obviously changes as you go from you know pets to people, but the concept remains the same. Now I'm gonna be laminating these poplar strips onto the walnut sideboards themselves. Um, just a good bit of glue in there and then clamping everything down, making sure that my bottom is all flush and trying to clean up as much glue out as I can because I don't wanna have to keep sanding. I've sanded so much off camera in this video, it's ridiculous. Um, and if you're doing it for people or doing a big, bigger bed, I would recommend some screws. But for the weight, this thing's gonna see 
Um, and it's a face grain to face grain joint, which again is the strongest joint. Not necessary in this case, um, but you do you. After that, I'm going ahead and clamping on those center rail support blocks. Super easy. And then prepping for finish. So again, hand sanded, broke all the corners. I chamfered the feet off camera. And then I like to use an air compressor to really blow out that grain. You'd be surprised how much stuff gets caked in there. Um, and then I also go back with a tack cloth to get any dust that is settled. Now for this one, we both decided that we like the dark natural wood finish. So we're gonna be using, you guessed it, Rubio Monocoat Walnut. Um, I love this stuff because it's so foolproof. I love being able to get the real wood feel. And then I think it just looks awesome. I have a dusty shop. I don't really uh, clean it up that well. And HVLP is just not something that interests me at this time. If I get the space where I have a room where I can set it up, I'd definitely be more inclined. But to have to cover everything up is just such a pain. And then odds are I'm gonna have a lot of errors. But in the case of the wooden dog bed, I'd say this finish was about as flawless as I can get it. Now Rubio is pretty foolproof, um, but I am a pretty fool, so you never know what's gonna happen with that scenario. Now, all of the poplar was finished with simple finishes, hard wax oil, um, no reason to use the Rubio walnut on it. You're never gonna see any of that stuff. Um, so just doing my final dry assembly, getting all my hardware reinstalled and lined back up, getting it all ready for its final delivery. Now, I actually hadn't seen the mattress with the cover on it and everything. I actually washed the mattress cover and everything for the client. So everything is nice and clean for delivery. So getting it all staged for him to come here in a little bit and getting that final look. Super happy with how this came out. But before that's done, wanted to go ahead and attach this nylon webbing to all my slats to turn it from nine loose slats to one manageable mess or at least somewhat manageable. Um, so that's the last little thing. I mean, with that, this bed's pretty much done. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely want to give credit to those who watched all the way to the end. So this week, start your comment with your favorite type of animal. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.